Hi everyone, and welcome to Biology Professor. Today we're going to talk about the universal genetic code and how it is used to convert information stored in DNA into protein. First, let's talk about what the genetic code is. It's simply a set of rules, a set of instructions, if you will, that the cell uses to get information that is encoded in genetic material into protein. It's kind of like a language, as we'll see. So the genetic code helps information that is encoded within mRNA to be converted into protein. And again, the process through which that happens is translation. So let's look at how it works. Cells have information that is stored within DNA. This is why DNA is the genetic material of cells. This genetic information gets transcribed into RNA and then translated into protein. So this process, this movement of genetic information from DNA to protein through an RNA intermediate is known as the central dogma of molecular biology. If you're interested in learning more about the central dogma, see my video on that topic. Now, here we have a DNA sequence made of the nucleotides, thymine, adenine, cytosine, and guanine. This here is the template strand. So it's the strand of DNA that is going to be used in transcription to make the strand of mRNA. And so, this is done by complementary base pairing between nucleotides. Remember that in the process of transcription, because there is no thymine in RNA, the other nucleotides are the same, adenine, guanine, and cytosine, but since there's no thymine, we use uracil to base pair with the adenines. So here we have our mRNA strand. The genetic code works off of nucleotide triplets. That means that a set of three nucleotides, which is called a codon, each codon codes for an amino acid. So for example, AUG is one codon and it codes for the amino acid methionine. If we continue down the line to the next codon, UGG, this codes for tryptophan. And again, CAU, this is the third codon, it codes for histidine. AUA codes for isoleucine. ACG codes for threonine, GCA codes for alanine, and finally we get to UAG. UAG is special because it is a stop codon. It is what tells the translation process to terminate the ongoing process so that no more amino acids are added. So UAG is one of three different stop codons. AUG for methionine is known as the start codon. That's because AUG is at the beginning of every mRNA sequence and it codes the first amino acid, which is always methionine. Of course, methionine can also be used within the protein chain, but it's always found at the beginning. So that is the difference between start and stop codons. I also want to briefly talk about the effect of mutations. Notice how the codon code, so the triplets that we use to convert from the nucleotides to the amino acids, it is considered non-overlapping. That means the first three nucleotides are part of codon 1, then the second set of three nucleotides is codon 2, the third set of three nucleotides is codon 3. 
rather than the codons moving like AUG, UGU, GUG, etc., which would be overlapping. So the code is non-overlapping. However, if you have a point mutation that is a change in one nucleotide, that can affect which amino acid is eventually plugged in to the growing polypeptide chain. So for example, in a missense mutation, this is when the nucleotide changes so that a different amino acid is plugged into the polypeptide chain. A nonsense mutation is when one of these codons changes in such a way that rather than coding for an amino acid, it codes for a stop codon. For example, here, UGG codes for tryptophan, but if there were a mutation that changed this G to an A, and of course when we say a mutation, we mean something that happens in the original DNA strand, but if it alters this to a UGA, that is a kind of stop codon. So we would have a, a stop codon here, and that would be called a truncation, so an early truncation that results in a truncated polypeptide because translation was terminated too early. Uh, an even more severe type of mutation is a frame shift mutation, and that occurs when there's an insertion or deletion of nucleotides. So if in the original DNA sequence there is an insertion or a deletion of one or two nucleotides, that's going to throw off all of the codons because of that non-overlapping codon language. You can imagine that if there were just one or two nucleotides inserted in here that were extra due to mutation, that would throw off all of the later amino acids. They would all be read incorrectly. I also want to talk about something very special in the genetic code, and this is its redundancy. You often hear this called as degeneracy. This is because with the genetic code, if you look at the table that shows which codons code for which amino acids, you'll see that there are actually 64 codons. That's because there are 64 different combinations of the four nucleotides in codon triplets. However, these 64 codons, they only code for 20 amino acids. This means that there are several codons that can be used to code for just one amino acid. And this leads us to something known as the wobble hypothesis. That is that in most cases, not all, but most, the third letter of the codon doesn't actually matter. That means that as long as the first two are correct, the third one, in many cases, can be any one of the nucleotides, and you'll still get the right amino acid down here. And that's because of that redundancy in the genetic code. Now, the reason that this is important is because it basically means that mutations in the third spot of the codon are not as likely to affect the actual amino acid being plugged in to the polypeptide chain. Now, before we end, let's talk about a couple of exceptions to the genetic code. One of the cool things about the genetic code is that it is used by virtually all living organisms. It's one of those pieces of evidence for the common descent of all life from one previous ancestor. However, there are a few organisms that have developed some changes over time. For example, eukaryotic cells use methionine as their start codon. So AUG is the start codon, methionine is the first amino acid plugged into the polypeptide chain, whereas 
Bacteria, on the other hand, tend to use a kind of modified methionine known as formal methionine. The formal group on the methionine amino acid in those bacteria, many times it can be removed in post-translational modifications. But that is a, a modification that's been picked up by many bacteria. Also, stop codons versus non-standard amino acids. The stop codons, there are three of them used by most living things. In certain organisms, one or two of those stop codons may actually code for a non-standard amino acid. So not one of the 20 that we think of as canonical amino acids, but things like selenocysteine and pyrolysine that are only used in a few different organisms, and those are simply evolutionary modifications. So that is it for our discussion of the universal genetic code. I hope you learned a lot, and thanks for watching Biology Professor.